Today's episode of The Anthony Anderson Show is brought to you by MountGox.com, that's M-T-G-O-X.com, and USGoldCoins.com, that's 1-800-HOT-COIN, and MezzyGrill.com, that's M-E-Z-E Grill.com. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Anthony Anderson, here coming live from New York City. I'm here with two very important guests, Harley and Freely, otherwise known as Durian Rider and Freely. What's your real name? I don't even gonna ask you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> mystery. That is my real name. Living in a mystery. That's cool. That's cool. And um, luckily enough, they've come to New York for the Woodstock Fruit Festival and making some other appearances. And and um, yeah, it's, you guys have graced me with your presence. It's really cool to be able to talk. And thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah it's thanks. really cool. It's, great to be here. it's really right. cool. Yeah, yeah. So, what brings you to New York? Besides, yeah, just tell me what brings you to New York. What's up? Mainly the uh, Woodstock Fruit Festival. That's the main thing. So, which camera are we looking? For? Oh, you know, just you know, we just hang out. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Woodstock Fruit Festival. That's yeah. what we're going for. Yeah. And then we're doing a few talks in the meantime and just hanging out. Okay. Check yeah. out New York City. It's yeah. Great. We love it here. You like it? We love it. Yeah. yeah. What do you so like good. especially? I think just the availability of fruit. Yeah. You know, just having <laughs> for sure. Yeah, like in Whole Foods is so amazing. Yeah. I and mean, we don't have that in Australia, so. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. What about you? I like the training here. I, I did a two hundred kilometer bike ride which has been my first big 200 kilometer bike ride in a city. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. can't do that anywhere else in the world, really. And yeah. I did 100 miles in the Central Park, and then I did 20 kilometers to get there and 20 kilometers to get home. It's yeah. incredible. Like, so, and I've always had cyclists around me. I was talking to people, and everyone's really friendly. I found New York is very friendly, mm-hmm. despite what, you know, the common belief is back home or whatever. Or yeah. Everyone's so, like, ask for directions, people help you out. Yeah. If you talk to other cyclists or runners, they... Just really friendly, very outgoing here. Yeah, people are, are it's funny because there's all this misconception about New York. I think it's from TV or the movies. But yeah. what I realize is most people that live here now aren't from here. So we've all been newcomers and we want to just, you know, like help each other. Yeah. And people are yeah. very helpful. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. There's Big really time. good energy here. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the summertime when everyone's yeah. like. Yeah, maybe stiffening in the cold winter. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. I don't know. It depends. If people are in a rush, you know, yeah. but they're always very uh, happy to help. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, have you been down to Chinatown yet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, all the good. fruit stalls there are great. It's pretty good. Fruit stalls everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's like Thailand. Yeah. It really is. It's amazing. Yeah. Minus like the fresh durian and yeah. some other stuff, but yeah, yeah. it's well, still pretty good. Yeah. Well, the prices are a little different, but you know, uh, still, yeah, it's still cheap big, in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So Far cheaper. What have you noticed in Australia? Because there was the the big rain yeah. coming in, and yeah. did that affect prices? Cyclone. Yeah. Because. Yeah, we grow the majority of fruit local in Australia, uh-huh. which is sort of good in one way, but if you have a big <laughs> crisis, environmental crisis. Isolation. So we, this year we had hardly any grapes. This is organic. Hardly any grapes, hardly any mangoes. Um, it was virtually, you couldn't, get an organic, mangoes. you couldn't get an organic mango yeah. in last December in Adelaide in South Australia. You couldn't get an organic mango. And if you could, the year before, $10 each. Yeah, so it's sort ten dollars each for a mango. Ten dollars, yeah, organic mango. And off wow. now, uh-huh. off and now, you're not guaranteed it's going to be good quality no. either. Like, so, yeah. But and bananas, how much are bananas, yeah. Now bananas are twenty dollars a kilo, so it's about eleven dollars US a pound. Okay, yeah. Trader Joe's, you know, a dollar a pound. Yeah, eighty cents a pound. <laughs> I, bought, I bought eighty pounds of organic bananas the other day, and carried them through the New York subway on a sack trolley. <laughs> eighty pounds of bananas cost me sixty dollars US. And in Australia, that cost me eight hundred and eighty dollars wow. US. Wow! <laughs> so we come. So we want to move here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't see why not. Until the banana crisis goes back back home. Until right. the snow comes here, then we'll yeah, move back. Yeah, yeah. Move to Thailand. You're yeah, right. <laughs> Which part of Australia are you from? We do a lot of travel, but generally South Australia. Okay. Go there for summer because it's really nice in summer. Okay. Like Queensland. As well. Okay. Yeah. 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 For all the there. American viewers and uh, yeah. The nice. Gold Coast, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Surface paradise. Yeah. Like Adelaide, and that's up. Is Adelaide up north? Adelaide's down south. Darwin's oh, up is north. It? Cairns is up north. Adelaide's down south. It's sort of very. It's got a climate similar to LA. Okay. Winter's pretty mild. Summer's really hot. It's pretty good. Yeah. Did you make it over to Perth at all? Yeah, yeah. I, I was born in Perth, and I've cycled from Perth to Sydney. Actually, cycled from Perth to Cairns. Yeah, Perth's nice. Yeah. But for fruit and healthy living, Adelaide's really good. Uh huh. And so is Byron Bay, Queensland. Brisbane. Yeah. They're yeah. Good. Good areas as well, Byron Bay, Brisbane. Okay. Yeah, so oh. get some good, it's got some good local markets in Byron Bay. Yeah. And Byron Bay wasn't affected by the storm, so they, they had an okay season for fruit. Cool. Yeah, bananas yeah. are pretty cheap, so. Okay, yeah. cool. 
Uh, starting with you, how did you get into the conscious eating from, you know, where, where did you start? Like, did you grow up in a regular household like most of us? I, mean, I grew up on a farm actually. So wow. yeah, we always had heaps of organic fruits and vegetables. Oh wow. We also killed animals as well. Yeah. Like we had chickens, you know, decapitating chickens everywhere and eating them. And that always, right. you know, right. upset me. Right. But my mum was always into conscious eating. Okay. And she tried her best to feed us what she thought was healthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was better because it was unprocessed, a lot of whole food. Mm -hmm. But it's still, you know, I still had problems. I still had bad skin and I was, you know, struggling with my weight and everything like that. And, and then I came to Sydney and I was, I was pretty toxic when I got to Sydney. And I became even more toxic because I started taking drugs. Mm -hmm. you know, so I was taking like cocaine and ecstasy and all sorts of okay. damaging drugs. Sure. I got into yoga and my yoga teacher, she was a um, vegan. She was really vibrant and she recommended that I get a juicer. Mm -hmm. And the juicer I got came with a raw food um, recipe book. I had raw meat in there and stuff and I was a bit Oh like, wow, well, that's, I don't know that's random. That. Yeah, it was, yeah. Like, and that fully just like, freaked me out at the time. Uh -huh. But I didn't go there. But I tried to do raw food back in 2000 for a couple of weeks and I just didn't know how to do it properly. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I fell off the wagon, yeah. fast forward about six years and I think it was, yeah, David Wolf actually, you know, one of his books, um, Sun Food Success Diet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that and, you know, watched a few videos and got on the rawfood.com website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and just like, <laughs> oh, I just thought I found the holy grail. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, I Me was, too. I was suffering such bad health. You know, mm. I was overweight, had chronic digestive problems, acne all over my face and my chest and my shoulders and wow. um, well, chronic so, fatigue. Yeah. yeah. And what was your diet like at that point? At that point, it was high in cheese, goat cheese. I was really, really yeah. into the goat cheese. Um, meat, I would binge out on, sometimes I'd eat a whole chicken a day. Sure. Like, actually, that was quite often. I yeah. ate a whole chicken a day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the body wasn't happy. It was not happy. Interesting. No. no. Okay. I really needed to lighten the load. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I did. You know, like, I got into it and found Dr. Graham. Right. Found Harley on um, Raw Pleasure. I don't know, it's called rawpleasure.com.au, an Australian raw food website. Uh huh. And he was on there saying, all oh, you people got to eat more fruit. This is like, <laughs> right. you know, like five years ago. Yeah. Five yeah. and a half years ago. And, you know, I started implementing the diet and yeah, the results just kept coming and coming mm -hmm. and I haven't looked back. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. did have one fall off the wagon for a month and I felt terrible. And I knew, you know, like, you know what we were saying before, like once the truth, you know, once you hear the truth, you can never really, yeah, yeah like you change forever. Yeah. You know, and, and I knew the truth it was just simple eating, mm -hmm. you know, simple unprocessed food, mm -hmm. fruit and veggies. Yeah. Um, what, what convinced you to go vegan from growing up on the farm? Well... Was it gradual or was there like a, like a something? About a, a month. Show? Oh, that's about pretty fast. About a month from, yeah, from eating full on. Actually, the, the biggest thing was I went to the Greek islands with a, a few friends and I completely just hammered myself with euros you know those euros oh like yeah a pancake yeah. they put chips in and they put that cut meat <laughs> yeah in. it's really greasy yeah i was having them all the time like twice a day and yeah i felt completely toxic when i came home and yeah. you know when you, you you've got to sort of hit rock bottom sometimes mm -hmm. you know before you make a real change in your life and mm -hmm. i was there i was at rock bottom yeah and um within a month of coming back I gave up meat and went raw vegan. Okay. Yeah, pretty much straight away. Like. Yeah, it just felt right. Yeah, it felt, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I was desperate to feel better. And Greece was like four years ago, five years ago? It was 2006. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. And how about you? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I was the kid at school who was really sick and I was a kid at school who was always absent from sickness. And I was, always, I was a kid at school who on a sports day would be picked last. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, okay, Harley, you can come on our team. And I'm like, well, there's no one else but me anyway. And like, <laughs> so I was, and I always wanted to have more energy. I always wanted to be one of the fit kids, but I couldn't. I was always sick, asthma, digestive problems, which later on we found out was Crohn's disease. Oh, wow. And when I became a teenager, I had acne. And so I didn't really feel good. Yeah. You know? And then I, when I left school, I started riding my bike around because I didn't have a driver's license. I couldn't afford a car. 
and I'm 34 now and I still don't have a driver's license. So I just love the bike. So using a bike for transport inspired me to uh, start eating better. And I started hanging out with cyclists and they started you know, telling me about better eating and how McDonald's was bad and yeah. things like that. And so I started training more, started feeling better, eating more carbohydrates, less fat, more plants, less animals. But it still wasn't enough and then eventually I really got chronic fatigue pretty heavily and I was struggling and a friend of mine mentioned the word vegetarian and I was like, vegetarian? That's, that's crazy. So before, I'm, I feel so crap, I'll give it a go. And I got rid of all the meat and fish overnight, went vegetarian for a week, started to feel really good. Mm -hmm. and I read about dairy products and how they can congest your lungs and mm -hmm. affect your Crohn's disease and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go and if it doesn't work, I can always go back. And, it worked, and that was uh, April 2001. I've been vegan since. Okay, wow, then, 10 years now. Yeah, then about a year later, I got into raw foods, and I've always been you know, liked fruit. I think mean, everyone likes fruit. Yeah. And then I just started incorporating more raw foods, so I can have fruit for breakfast and lunch and things like that, and it takes me to where I am today, with full-blown bananas. Banana <laughs> <laughs> muncher. You know, he is the uh, king banana muncher. And, it's, you know, and, and now, like, I've run marathons, I've cycled over 190,000 kilometers as a vegan, and I just rode my bike here, and, you know, people try and keep up, and they're trying to race here, and it's like, man, you know, no chance, and it's so good for the ego, but, uh, you know, it's, it's that, yeah. you know, it's good, fun, because now I feel so fit now, you know what I mean, like, yeah. it's, it's awesome, I was a sick kid, now I'm just like, when Lance Armstrong's in town, I'll hook up for a ride with him, keep right. up with those guys, no worries, you know, be a tour guy for the day keep up with anybody on a bike in a training mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So, and that feels good. It feels good to be able to get on my bike and just ride across the country. Mm -hmm. In 2006, I rode from Seattle to LA. I've ridden from Perth to Tippi Cape York in Australia. I've ridden Singapore to Cambodia. And it's, I don't feel like I'm wow. going to my reserves anymore. I feel like I'm just, you know, in third gear. And I can just click it up into six and keep on cruising. It's, uh -huh. It feels good. Uh -huh. I have a greater participation in my daily reality. So, no, I'm, I'm having a good time. And I don't have Crohn's disease, I don't have chronic fatigue, I don't have asthma, except for when I'm sleeping with a cat near my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know what I mean? Like, all my issues oh, are just taken care of. Uh -huh. so, and I've worked out it's not just about diet, it's also about lifestyle. Totally. Early yeah. nights, or lately I've had some late nights just being on the computer mm -hmm. and, you know, catching up with people. So I've had late nights and a slot lifestyle. It's about your diet and your lifestyle, sleep, yeah. water, yeah. Exercise, fun in the sun, emotional poise, things like that. Yeah. Contrib contribution. Mm -hmm. For sure, I'd say. What's the water like? How do you do your, I mean, is there a specific water you prefer or? Oh, the, I, I prefer Definitely. spring water, like you, we, just, okay. we just drink it with your hands. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. the first person That'd to touch it, that's the best. Yeah. But uh, if I can't get that, then I'll, I'll drink anything. Yeah. I did, when I was doing 200 kilometers the other day in New York City, I stopped at Central Park and filled my board. Bottle, uh, bottle up with the water from the public fountain uh -huh. and I let it just sit there for a few minutes and, so the chlorine can evaporate. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that, but if you yeah. open water, chlorine gets out. Right. So I'll, I'll drink any water I can get with okay. the ideal of the best quality. But, it's uh, better, better than being dehydrated. Right. You know, like, it's, you know, I remember, well, we right. went for that run and I was mm. like, mm, I, like, I held off because okay. I don't know, I still get scared of the fountain water now. That's fine. But, you know, yeah. whatever. It's, yeah. yeah. But you're, you're right, you know, dehydration sucks. And mm. as it can be pretty serious. unhealthy. You know, it can take a week to recover or more. Yeah. And dehydration can take days, weeks, months, or even years to really catch up on us. Uh huh. It's uh, serious. Our housemate, Veronica, she died in 2009 from dehydration, doing a dry fast, water fast. And didn't drink enough water. I mean, if she drank mud water, she would be alive today. Yeah. So it's, I, I'm into good quality water, but I'm not into dehydration, so I'll drink whatever I can get. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Let me think here. Uh, so as far as your diet now, is there any kind of like favorite fruits? What kind of fat sources do you eat, if any? Fat durian, sources? Durian. Durian's like oh, favorite. Yeah. <laughs> any have, coconuts? Yeah, coconuts. Yeah, we have overt fats. Yeah. You know, like, you know. But it's pretty minimal? Pretty it's minimal, minimal. Yeah. yeah. Like, avocado might be okay. a half every two weeks. Okay. You know, max. Wow, that's so low. But then we might eat at quintessence. Like oh, sure. The, yeah, so we, we get some more fat that way. Yeah. But I, I consistently feel my best keeping my fat levels around 5% of my daily calories. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's not including any overt, overtly fatty fruits. That's right. just like sweet fruits. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we don't have a lot, do we? Like, but when we go to Thailand, we have durian. Yeah. You know, so that brings the fat level up. So yeah. it's Over the course of the year. Right. It right, averages right. out to probably between five and ten percent. Okay. Okay. But even when I'm in Thailand, I don't eat durian every day. I find it a bit too heavy yeah. to have it every day. Yeah. And I, you know, I like my bananas and I, do, I love durian, but it's not an everyday food for me. I like avocado, but it's not an every week food for me. Mm-hmm. I like flax crackers now and then, but that's not an every month food for me. Yeah. We've done so, it, haven't we? We've done that. Yeah. And it just, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Like, they're more snack like foods. The than, yeah. more, they're more snacks than staples. Right. For me, it's the bananas, dates as a staple, and then mangoes, grapes, melons, figs, Papayas, you know, apples, pears, mango steens, you know, jackfruit, gumma chumma, you know, things like that, breadfruit. Datorade, oh. Datorade is like my favorite. What's Datorade? Datorade is like when you blend 20 or 30 medjool dates. <laughs> right. <laughs> with about a liter to a liter and a half of water with um, cinnamon, or, or you can add like chopped mint herb. Yeah. And blend that on high. Uh-huh. And it's just like a chocolate mint smoothie, I mean, like yeah. a milkshake. It's yeah. amazing. It's really, really tasty. Yeah. Or you can put, um, <laughs> you can make apple pie in a glass. <laughs> it's like <laughs> apple, date, water, and blend that up. Oh, yeah. Ratios go, you know, like 20 to 30 dates and one to two apples, one to one and a half litres of water. Yeah, yeah. And cinnamon, yeah. <laughs> Fuji, Fuji apples are good for that one. It's so good. Oh, yeah, oh, Fuji. Fuji's, Fuji's, you gonna try yeah. it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's good. <laughs> make it for the potluck tonight. Yeah, uh, it'll be good if we can get it. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's crazy. Um, so, okay, so fat's really low. Protein, you don't even really think about it. It's nah, more just enough, like yeah, just if, eating. If you get enough calories, you get enough protein. And as yeah. you, you know, an endurance athlete, doing up to, you know, 515 kilometers in a day, yeah. if I wasn't getting enough protein, I simply couldn't do that. I simply couldn't be at the fitness level that I'm at. Yeah. People would say, oh, you're pretty skinny. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a marathon runner, endurance cyclist. That's, that's how we look, you know. Mm-hmm. But if I was into bodybuilding, I'd have no problems, you know, putting on 20 kilos of muscle in a, in a couple uh-huh. of years. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't train weights because cycling and running is all about being slim. I mean, you've got all the yeah, if they size. So yeah, power to weight ratio. But protein is a non-issue if you yeah, get enough calories. There's not even a medical word for protein deficiency. Yeah. We have kwashiorkor, we have marasmus, we have kwashiorkor marasmus, but these refer to caloric deficiency, not protein deficiency. Mm-hmm. And we actually find in, in starvation uh, patients, they're best put on a low protein around the 10, 10% of calories from coming from protein mm-hmm. diet, high carbohydrate, low fat, low protein. Mm-hmm. That helps their kidneys regenerate and helps them get back up to ideal body weight. Yeah. So protein's mm. just been mishyped. I mean, I had to talk it's to- It's dairy industry. It's billion dollar industry. Of there. Like, I, I talked yeah. to a friend the other day and yeah. he said, oh, you know, if I was a vegan, I wouldn't get enough protein. I'm like, well, I could go out and eat a kilo of plant protein a day. And it could be a, a protein powder, vegan protein powder, or it could be you know, raw protein powder. No worries. And my friend's like, okay, well, but you still, you don't get enough protein. I'm like, you eat steak, you eat more steak than anybody I know. He eats like a massive steak every night and he's into bodybuilding. And he takes a protein powder on top of that. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, if you don't get enough protein and you're a meat eater and you're taking protein powder, I don't, I don't understand, you know. Yeah. It's like me saying, you know, you can't ride a bike because you might have an accident. You've got to drive a car instead. Uh-huh. Like cars have accidents, you know. It's, yeah. But protein's a non-issue. Get enough calories, protein automatically. Human mother's breast milk's about 5% of calories coming from protein. Hmm. Fruit's 5 to 7% of calories coming from protein. Mm-hmm. Most vegetables, you know, 10 to 20 to 30% calories coming from protein. Get enough pro- calories of protein, non-issue. Mm-hmm. The World Health Organization even says that 2.5% minimum calories coming from protein is sufficient for grown adults. It's yeah, so, yeah. not an issue. If it, was, if it was an issue, we'd be the first to know because we're testing our bodies, riding our bikes across countries. And I was worried about that doing when, races. I first, when I started. I was, yeah. yeah, I was concerned. Yeah. I can understand why people are. Yeah. But then I, I educated myself and realized yeah. it isn't an issue at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a whole lot of propaganda. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's important honest. to like, yeah. Yeah, you got to try it yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Ed, you know, and read and, you know, learn, you know, educate yourself as right. well. I'll say. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people say this is more of a diet lifestyle, or more of a diet for endurance athletes, people mm. that are burning the sugar. Yeah. So what if I'm just chilling out, you know, doing my thing? What, how do I do it? For a start, I don't do that much exercise. A lot of people think, oh, you know, Freely, she runs like marathons every day. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't at all. You've never regular- been a marathon. No. And I regularly <laughs> have days off, you know. Yeah. 
full days off or I'll just sit on the computer all day, which mm-hmm. isn't really the healthiest thing to do. But I will do it because it's a priority at the moment. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I do probably about 30 Ks a week jogging and okay. that is it. Okay. So, you know, anyone can work out that is not a lot. Yeah. So I'm not an endurance athlete. It's about three hours a week exercise. Yeah, that isn't... It's not know, a lot, That's no. not a lot. Think yeah. about the people in the gym. They're in there for two hours a day, some people. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Yeah. So, so technically you're exercising less than the USDA guidelines. They yeah, say 30 uh, to 40 minutes a day. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's my story. But so that, uh, that's about four hours a day, four hours a week that I estimate, and you do three, so you under-exercise. I am. And well, there, there you, you go, have I need it. to improve. <laughs> <laughs> Get in shape, really, geez. No, that's, <laughs> but yeah, that's, step it up. Yeah. <laughs> I think as well, like, we don't have children. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a sex me years ago, we didn't have children. Yesterday I spent 13 hours on the computer. My only exercise was playing with the cat and getting up to go to the toilet or get more food or get more water. Yeah. You know, so and then today, just rode my bike here in the sunshine, and it's not a lot of exercise on average, but it's consistent. We're consistent with our bodies, but we're not obsessed about it. Like if someone said, yeah. you're not going to exercise the next month, we want to test you in a lab, or like, whatever, man, mm-hmm. it's cool. And you so, eat the same. I eat exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. I'd eat less because my appetite would go down if I'm not exercising. But not right. consciously. I wouldn't deprive consciously yourself deprive it, never. Or restrict yeah. calories. We never restrict calories. Yeah. Ever. Ever. Well, because it seems like you guys might be, be burning like 20,000 calories in a day. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, if you're riding... Yeah, if, you're doing, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm doing a 24-hour race, yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah, it's a lot. 20,000 is a lot. But though. even, yeah. you know, it's about 1,000 you know, an hour, so it can be 20,000, Yeah. 24,000. But it's sort of, if you're using your brain a lot as well, uh-huh. this is what people who've got mm. kids, if they've got, you know, working in a stressful job or they're dealing with stressful people or whatever, they need a lot of carbohydrate calories. Hmm. But not fats. We need you minimal would, fat. Well, you would, I see, I'm always thinking that the fats are good for the brains. Well, the fats, minimal. the body can't yeah. run on fat. Yeah. In terms of like the brain, the glucose, the, the brain is fueled exclusively by glucose. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into ketosis, you can feel off ketone bodies, but that's a really bad state to be in. Mm-hmm. You risk ketoacidosis, things like that. And you don't feel as good. Like, you feel like. No. And then if someone says, let's go go for a walk, or let's go dance all night, let's go, go have some fun, let's go mm-hmm. play with the kids, it's like, oh man. <laughs> it's so yeah. easy on fruit, you know, it's so easy on high, high carb. Uh-huh. You know, like it's. It's not an issue. It's and energy. definitely fruits different than breads. Yeah, I mean, breads. Sweet potatoes, even. Or they're, they're good, but the thing is with breads and stuff is people add, you know, sour cream or the pastrami, salami, steak, eggs, chicken, fish, things yeah. like that. They add to that, then they eat that, get fat from the fat, and going, oh, it must be the bread. <laughs> but yeah. It's the, Come on. you know. Oh, yeah. If, like, Anti-carb, well. Here's the model. <laughs> Like I get you. you know, I heard someone the other day say rice rice cakes make you fat. You know, rice cakes. A, a famous health author was saying rice cakes make you fat, and I'm like, oh, I got a friend of anorexia, and she eats rice cakes, cucumbers, and fruit. Uh-huh. And that's you know that's what anorexics eat. Anorexics, anorexics don't eat Big Macs and big steaks and stuff like that. They eat these high carbohydrate, low fat foods because they yeah. keep you lean naturally. Right, right. Okay, and, uh, interesting. I'm not promoting anorexia, but that, if we look at oh, that yeah, model. Yeah. If you look at the model, what they eat, they eat the lean foods. And then we, if we jump over to athletes, they eat the high, high carb, low fat, low protein foods typically. Mm-hmm. So if we head towards the athletes, eat like them, we have more energy like an athlete. So that means we have more energy for our kids, more energy for our business, our passions, our you know, pleasures, our travel, our finances, etc. I think life is sport. Life's hectic enough as it is. You know, we live in 2011, everyone's got pressures. Mm-hmm. You know, stress, paying off the mortgage, looking after the kids, keeping up with peer pressures, and that burns a lot of glucose, yeah. which is glycogen, stored glucose. So everyone needs a lot, otherwise we start to feel overwhelmed, we start to depend on coffee and tea and you know adrenaline to keep going. Yeah. But if we get enough carbohydrates, it's easy to just naturally you know, do our things. Mm-hmm. But when people, as soon as people cut their carbs because they think, oh, I'll get fat, it's like, man, it's like, they're not mm. We would be it. obese if that was the case. Yeah, yeah. We, I, we I mean, more, agreed. We eat more simple sugars than anyone. And everyone mm. says, oh, you guys are too thin. You're too scrawny. Oh, you exercise too much. It's not but fruit makes you fat. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, hang on, if, if fruit makes you fat, at least after five years, we should be getting obese by now. Mm-hmm. Or, or we should be getting at least, you know, pudgy. Yeah. After five years being crazy fruit nuts. Yeah. Well, actually, for me, it's been nine years since I started into raw foods and hitting the fruit. So yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> and we're not obsessive about exercise and we promote unlimited calories One last which thing. is very different on the different. fat thing too like um, 
you only need three percent of your daily calories from fat to cover like your EFA requirements. So three hmm. percent. Yeah. And just eating sweet fruit, you easily get over five percent. Mm -hmm. Like non-fatty sweet fruit. Mm -hmm. So three percent is easy. Yeah. It's easy to cover. Yeah. So. Oh, um, should we go to a break? Should we do a little break here? Now would be a great time to thank our sponsors. Let <laughs> me see this. <laughs> Manny, show me the screen, brother. <laughs> Mt. Gox, that's M-T-G-O-X dot com. They're online exchange services for Bitcoins. They now take Euros, um, British Pounds, and Australian Dollars. And the Canadian Dollar is coming soon. Continuing fees of 3% now until August 9th. So make it happen. MTGOX.com. And USGoldcoins.com. That's 1-800-HOT-COIN. I actually just met Andy Goss today. He is an awesome person. Uh, he's a trusted advisor for investments in rare and gold silver coins. He t really takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold by holding it in your hand, getting it from tangible assets. Um, call him directly. 1-800-HOT-COIN and mezzygrill.com. It's authentic Mediterranean food. 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City, just a couple blocks south of Columbus Circle. So if you're in Central Park, definitely head down there and check it out. They're also serving breakfast. And because of their clean food, they were just accepted onto Clean Plates NYC. So check them out. They are awesome. All right, we're back. So, um, do you think about the omega threes or the omega sixes at all? Like, how does yeah. how does that play in? I was eating some some flax seeds last night. I'm eating these crackers. I'm thinking, I'm eating too many omega threes here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting an overdose here. This is, this is this is I'm doing the math on the back of the packet, and this is going to last me six months. I mean, I was eating. I ate probably over 100 grams of omega three last night because uh -huh. flax seed has about 23 grams of omega three per 100 grams, which is yeah. Insane, and fish typically has about one gram to 0.3 of a gram per 100 grams edible portion. So you got 23 grams versus 0.3 of a gram or one gram. It's like omega threes is not an issue. Mm -hmm. And then I don't eat flax seeds that much, but I like to eat lettuce and greens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all fruits and vegetables have omega threes in them. Mm -hmm. Perfect if, balance. Yeah, and if we get the then the perfect omega six, omega three balance. So when you cut out all the oils and the, the animal products and stuff like that, or even the grains possibly, the omega three balance. Is a lot better. Yeah, for sure the grains. Yeah, they're between yeah. six and mm. three. But the whole emphasis on omega threes is again, the fish industry is going, wow, you know, fish has got so much mercury in it in 2011. The fish industry is like really taking a, a big hit, big king hit, and they're like, mm -hmm. omega three. Yeah. And we then the omega something. three got debunked, and then they're like, EPA, DHA. And, <laughs> and that's getting debunked because the body produces DHA and EPA, uh, EPA. EPA yeah. for omega threes and omega sixes. So it's, they, they're sort of like losing their hold and then people are producing algae and things like that. So you mm -hmm. have to use a fish oil. It's not an issue. And all the pharmaceutical runoff that goes into the ocean is like yeah. filtered through the fish's liver and I you know, know. stored in their flesh. And mm -hmm. All industry goes into the water, into the ocean, mm -hmm. all the runoff. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to eat you know, clean fish. Well, you, you could grow I, goldfish in a fish tank <laughs> in distilled water, <laughs> goldfish, goldfish smoothie. Oh, no. no one's doing that. Yeah, that's like, yeah I don't oh. see that too often. Maybe that's, for the next video. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be an option, but no one's doing it. Daniel yet. Vitalis might oh. do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be up for that, would he? Well, you know? Speaking of, <laughs> you up. brought him up. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you guys, do you still talk about the, these, you know, Vitalis and Wolf? Oh, I, I haven't I, been following. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I get, I get YouTube video requests. People send me a link. So can you please comment on this? So I'll just do a comment. Yeah, that, that's why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good. It sort of creates a bit of a debate atmosphere, and yeah, the good thing about internet is just, I find it's a community where people you know, can give and share and share opinions and debate. Sure, and sure. It's great because there's no real dialogue. There's often mono, uh, so it's, there's not much monologue. There's often dialogues because people get to really put their opinions on the plate. Yeah. Versus like TV, it's just that's how it is. The one way. There's no you yeah. can't debate that. But on the internet, if someone makes a YouTube video. Yeah. You can do a response video and that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So it's great. And um, have, I mean, you people think that you're too hard on, on these guys? Like maybe it might even be scaring people away from 801010 or I, if I know you're a straight <laughs> shooter. If, they, if they're scared of me, <laughs> like uh. freaking vegan. But it's important dude. to like, I think to remember that Harley's not attacking, you know, the person who's attacking the message that they're peddling, uh -huh. you know, more than anything. 
Yeah. You know, and, and what's, isn't that right? It's, it's not aggression, it's passion. I think yeah. it's, you know, people can, there's a fine line. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I mean, I think there's a lot more similarities in a oh, way. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I have 99% similarities, yeah, yeah. you know, but it's, I just put it out there because people request it and I think someone has to, you know. Yeah. And, and the thing is, people come to the raw food movement and they try and do, you low know, fruit, like David carb. sort of, yeah, style of. Which is higher fat. Higher fat, yeah. yeah. And they fall off the wagon and then they never come back to raw food again. And, uh-huh. you know, I think it's important to get the truth out about yeah. you know, what's healthy, what's sustainable. Yeah. And give, give, yeah. You know, give people like, options. Yeah, give, At least give, yeah. yeah, that's the idea is just give yeah. them the full mm-hmm. spectrum of what's available, of course, yeah. you know, and I'm not, I mean, yeah. <laughs> one, one comment someone said is how, you know, not every diet works for everyone. And you disagree. Different. And I disagree with that. And then I'll say, well, how come you say fruit, the, fruit and vegetables doesn't work ever? If, if not, you know what I mean? Like it might work for some people. But they're like, oh, they just hate that idea. Well, not you know? only yeah. that, every species on the planet. Species specific design. Yeah, Fruits yeah. and veggies it's work the same, for It's the same way. And we're trying to like change the wheel, you know, recreate the wheel. Mm-hmm. It's like exercise works for everybody. Mm-hmm. But everybody thrives on a high carb raw vegan lifestyle. I haven't seen one person not thrive mm-hmm. legitimately. Mm-hmm. You know, like we've, we've talked to them in more detail. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Have you tried it? Yes. I, I, I knew it as the Vitarian diet. The Vitarian. Johnny Love Wisdom. Yeah, I just it was kind yeah. of a natural thing that I was doing because I was trying to lose weight here and I was just doing green smoothies and fruit for like two months and honestly I felt amazing. Like amazing. But then I would have cravings. And like I would just go back downstairs and I would go to get ice cream, you know, and I would crash. And then it was like, I, I was on this nasty cycle for months yep. and I didn't know, you know, I wasn't sure. And, but I felt so good when I was doing the, yeah, I knew it was Vitarian, yep. just low fat, low fat raw vegan. And it was really high in greens. I mean, and a mm-hmm. ton of fiber, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. going to the bathroom like four times a day, you mm-hmm. know, just feeling so good. Yep. Uh, but then I was unstable. I felt like I was in like a, a crotch rocket kind of thing. And it was just so fast and like. I couldn't control it. Not enough calories. Yeah. Well, then, well yeah, I'm sorry. Cla- classic it might not have been enough right. calories. Yeah. I mean, because it was a lot of greens and, and you're apples a big and pears. You know, like, yeah. You've got to feed yourself. You've got more muscle than me. You know, like, that's, you've you you know. got to you know. feed that muscle. Yeah. And Otherwise, also, you're on the computer a lot. Like, yeah. I was in the gym a lot. I mean, I was going. I felt because I had so much sugar that I had to work out at least two hours a day to burn the sugar off. Otherwise, I was going to get fat. No. No. I don't know. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. I respect your guys' opinion for sure. And I mean, you're obviously like living it, you know. Um, Cool. Let's talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) You're not going to get fat on fruit. I was, I'd be like, sorry. I know, I know. Well, you, I mean, you're working out a bunch, but I get it. I get it. Not a bunch though, about an hour a day. I think when you say, when you say you've, you know, cycled across Australia and everything, people think you're doing that all the time. All the time. You know, like, that's, that's like, so He he doesn't know. He really doesn't. It's sort of like an analogy could be, you know, a mango tree, people will see the mango tree one year, it's just fruiting, and they assume it's fruiting all the time. Yeah. But you know, ten, 11 months out of the year, there's no, nothing there. Yeah. You know, so it's not always the situation. I don't train like a crazy dude. It, it, pay, it pays to be consistent on a lifestyle too. Mm-hmm. You know, like to give it more than a couple of months. Absolutely. Or even a year, give it more than a year. Yeah. Because it is a lifestyle, lifestyle change. Yeah. And you know, you've been living a different way for so long, that's gonna be a bit of an adjustment. Right. Right. Did you either um, either of you notice a lot of uh, detox cleansing symptoms, like anything coming out? Not really. Not a lot. People talk about that, but I just felt better. You know, yeah. like I didn't have any of this yeah, cleansing. Maybe the fiber there. helped. Yeah. yeah, fiber. I think a lot of these cleanses are very fiberless, mm. and I think that's when people have some problems. It's not coming out the bottom. It's coming out through wherever else. Well, they're yeah. adding as well. They're adding, you know, uh, a lot of. You know, toxic herbs or they're adding, they might have allergies to clay or they allergies to really? cacao, things like that. To so, clays you know. too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, where's the clay coming from? You know? Well, yeah. Good good to, have, yeah, it's good to investigate good that. Have, I mean, yeah. Seems sort of counter-intru- counterintuitive Eating. to eat clay too. Okay. Well, every <laughs> mammal, every it. mammal eats clay if they're yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, in, in nature, they'll, yeah. elephants will dig out clay and apes yeah. will eat it, you know, whatever. So but, I think when you're inspired yeah. to do that, then maybe yeah, it's time. I haven't time. felt like that yet. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like fasting. I don't know a lot of people fast and they shouldn't be fasting. And then they just, yeah. after the fast, they're just, just eating the worst junk and they're getting huge and they're going, what's going on? I'm like, 
you weren't ready to fast. You weren't even sick. He's one of the fast weight loss, and now your body's rebelling. Yeah. And saying, give me the food. Yeah. So yeah. De- I think it's more of a situation, not so much detox, but tox. Uh-huh. Mm. We run a large, we run the largest raw foods website on the planet. Thirty the bananas, busiest. the busiest. Yeah. Thirty bananas a day dot com, and yeah. so we see a lot of people coming with questions, and my inbox is full of questions every day. And because oh, I don't feel, I'm doing a detox diet, and I'm like, what are you eating? Like, oh, I'm doing like master cleanse of like a bit of maple syrup and lemon and cayenne pepper, and I'm like, hang on, cayenne pepper. Mm. It's like, man, it's just like you're put that in your eyes, and you you're freaking out. <laughs> yeah. And you're putting that through your sensitive digestive tract. That's 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 yeah. like detox. That's tox. <laughs> I mean, cayenne pepper. We use that in organic gardening as like a natural sort of pe- pesticide, pest repellent. Yeah. Well, it makes your intestinal tract want to release because it's an irritant. Yeah. So that, you know, I yeah. guess they're using it for that reason. Yeah. You know, to clean yeah. themselves yeah. out. But so, yeah. it's not, you know, fruit is the perfect broom. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. don't need any Bingo. irritant stuff. And people, and people say, what about colonics? I'm like, man, eat. You know, five pounds of kiwi fruit in a day. You don't need no colonic. <laughs> yeah. And colonics, dragon, dragon fruit. colonics pushing the water the long way up as well. Fruit pushes it the right way, you know, downwards. Colonics push your old fecal matter, old stuff back up mm. and then it can lodge sure. and that's not mm. good. So it's another one. When I first got into raw foods, I, I did everything I could to stay raw, you know, I wanted to be all raw. Yeah. So I'd eat a bag of raw cashews, a pound or two pounds of cashews yeah. mm-hmm. and feel terrible. And then I'd read the book and go, oh, it must be detox. It wasn't yeah. detox. I was just eating way fat too much out. fat mm-hmm. and uh, not enough fruit and just, just, you know, but I'll, I thought, oh, it's just detox, it'll pass. It wasn't detox. I was just doing the wrong things. Yeah. And uh, so that's why we speak up about it and tell people, you know, you just, you're on the wrong track. Just go over here and do that and you'll be right. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. It's, Simple stuff. So basically, we tell people what we would have liked to have heard when we first started our health journeys, raw food journeys. Yeah. And you definitely have to keep it simple. Mm. I mean, it's very straightforward. It's, it, it is, is it so is, yeah. simple. Are there any supplements that you use? Yeah, B12. definitely. Yeah, Vitamin B12. Okay. People say, oh, that's because you're vegan. It's like, well, not really. I, don't, I, don't, I have a genetic issue where my body doesn't produce enough intrinsic factor, and that could have been caused by my Crohn's disease, stuff like that. And I never would have found that out unless I was a vegan and people kept going me, about the B12 issue. Mm-hmm. So when you're vegan, you learn about B12 because everyone hits you with it. What about B12, what about B12? But the reality is all my cycling friends who aren't vegan, they all do B12 huh. if they're racing at elite level. Oh. And all Olympic athletes I know do B12, all the NBA stars and stuff like that, all it's doing B12. Vitamin. Yeah. And what style do you take? Is I do injections. Injections? Which sounds like yeah, injections, yeah. big you pharmaceutical know. companies, what are you doing there, it's not pure. I'm more into health and purity. B12 injections definitely work. Sublinguals, pills, patients, powders might work, but injections yeah. in your deltoid, intramuscular, definitely effective. You give them to yourself. Self-administer. It's like wow. lining up people behind the fruit shop, injecting them. Wow. <laughs> That's the only supplement we take. It's the yeah. only supplement we recommend. Even my friend who Adelaide Clinton, he's a, a raw meat eater. He's been a raw meat eater since 2001. A local organic wild he even once had it put a, a local chicken that someone killed put it on the roof in the sun to sun dry it and the flies got in there and the maggots got in there <laughs> so he ate the chicken with the maggots oh. and we got him we got him he's a great guy though, and uh, we got him tested this year in march and his b12 was still low huh. lower than he wanted it to be yeah. so he said harley all right get shoot me up so i'm shooting up my raw paleo buddy in the alleyway behind his fruit shop and then more people are coming in, I'm giving them B12 shots. Because they wanted to bypass the whole doctors, you have to get a prescription thing. Yeah, yeah. And I've and learned how to do it really well. And it's the soil, you know, the soil is depleted. Yeah. yeah. After all, the modern farming practices are depleting the soil. Yeah. I think it's up, upwards of 60% of cobalt mm-hmm. has been depleted from the soil. Mm-hmm. It's been removed, it's a mineral. Mm-hmm. You know, so without cobalt, you can't have B12. It's like uh-huh. the heart of B12. Okay. So it won't form without cobalt. Okay. So, yeah, you know, so there's a lot. Of, everyone's suffering. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, and in the U.S., you know, a Tufts University study pointed out that 39% of the U.S. has a B, low B12 levels. And then let's remember the B12 cutoff, the serum B12 level in your blood, is about 150. It's pretty low. In Japan, it's about 550. So you can be maybe sitting at 300 with your B12 serum in the U.S.A. or Australia, and doctors are like, "Yep, doing great." If you, if that was in Japan and you were 300, they'd be like injection straight away because mm-hmm. you're B12 deficient. Uh-huh. So that's why a lot of people go, Harley, I went to my doctor's, the doctor said I'm all right. And I'm like, 
man, you, you're 300 or you're 400, it's too low. Yeah. You know, get, get up there. Why do you think it's so high in Japan? It's a good question. It's a good question. I don't know, maybe it's... Uh, it's all the seafood. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But my friend who eats, he eats, he eats raw fish, he eats, yeah. he eats uh, oysters and stuff like that. He's still at low B12. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On paper, yeah, yeah. he eats like a thousand percent of the RDA a day on paper. Right. But when we go to his blood and his homocysteine level, it's not, it's not happening there. Yeah, yeah. So the biggest mistake people Japanese can do is go, I eat... <laughs> yeah. Radiation now. Oh, yeah, God. that's it, yeah. man. Radiation tuna. Mm. Yeah. So the biggest thing... Biggest mistake people can do is just assume that because eating animal products, they're getting all the nutrients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not the case. Yeah, it's not the case. So it's you know the, a good book to read is Could It Be B12 by Sally Patchlock, and she's an anti-vegan and uh-huh. she's, she says she's not biased at all. Uh-huh. If anything, she's biased against veganism. But in the book, points all these case histories of chronic B12 deficiency issues. Yeah, and meat eaters. So she contradicts herself. <laughs> But it's against yeah. vegans, but then she shows. Yeah. You think it's a gut flora issue? It can be, can be as well. Yeah. It can be intrinsic factor. Can be gut flora. Can be stress levels. Can be drug where you drinking. live. Can be drug issues. Coffee. Even. Coffee. Yeah. yeah excess salt. Things. Chili. Cayenne, garlic. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne yeah, peppers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, too much fat, not enough sugar for the probiotics to feed off. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of factors there. Yeah. Um, I. I People can get in the mistake of just doing B12 injections and just keep on partying on. Because B12 is used in weight loss clinics in all around the States. Weight loss clinics use B12 injections to promote fast metabolisms, which promote excess fat to be burned off. Yeah. So B12 injections are used for weight loss. I don't promote for that. B12 injections hmm. are used by Hollywood celebrities like Madonna, Justin Timberlake. You know, you look like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> you know, all these people doing B12 injections <laughs> for weight loss and vitality, I don't, I don't recommend that. I think if you've got an issue, use them, but look after your diet and lifestyle first. Get the early nights and things like that. And also, yeah. you know, if you've got a deficiency in B12 and you have it and you've got excess weight, you might lose weight because without B12, your body can't burn fat efficiently. Hmm. So okay. As efficiently, yeah. As efficiently, yeah. So okay. That may be some people's problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool. Oh, uh, well, you've got your bike in the studio. Yeah, Let's, man. Um, if we can, if you want to bring it in and yep. we'll see how everything looks. Tell us about it. What's the story behind this? Okay, game? we've got this, uh, it's from bambubikemaker.com. It's from, in Thailand. And uh, this guy, Webworks, he makes them. He used to work for Michelin now. He's making bamboo bikes in uh, Thailand. So it's, it's bamboo grown and bamboo is good because you can just cut it and it grows again. Mm-hmm. And it's just joined with carbon fiber and uh, this is a, my race bike and traveling bike. And I've, I've got a little mirror on the here for when I'm out on the highways. Oh. It's pretty good. Listen to your Walkman. How much does it weigh? Uh, it's about 9.6 kilos. So it's a lot heavier than a lot of the guys I'm racing with. But it's, you know, I, I don't think weight matters that much on your bike as long as it fit, fits you well. And uh, it's very comfortable. Good for New York streets. Yeah. New York's pretty rough here on the roads. And this soaks it up. Yeah. Nice and strong. And uh, I hear over 100,000 bikes a year get stolen here. So you've got to look after yeah. your bike in New York. Yeah. And those big fat chains bike. that people yeah. use? Oh, yeah. Massive. Yeah, you're yeah. saying. Yeah. It's like 100,000 bikes a day, a year. A year. I read that last that's night. That's crazy. Yeah, man, that's like, what's that? That's the last, like, uh, yeah. bikes box a day or something. Yeah, mine was right outside of Whole Foods in Union Square in the yeah. middle of the day. Middle yeah. of the day. Do you and have a chain? Yeah. yeah. Union Square is a, a hot chain spot. Or? Not a big chain. Okay. Union Square is a hot spot. They just stand there. There's a guy there with a cell phone. Oh, really? He'll just stand there and watch, and yeah. then he'll make a call, and they'll come yeah. around and pick wow. it up. I guess yeah. it's a business. It's yeah. a business. It's professional. Yeah. I read that last night, Union Square's hot spot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. It was a sad moment. I had to go back into the subway after, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the key is, I think, is to have two, two, two D-locks, one on your front and one on your back. Oh, uh, two. And then yeah. you sort of... Yeah. yeah. But no, so that's you know, a good bamboo bike and uh, really enjoy it. This is just um, carbon fiber or is it resin? It's carbon fiber with a, a bit of a resin. You can also get it done with a hemp fiber. Yeah. Which is uh, that's cool. an option. Hmm. It's a place yeah. in Brooklyn, isn't it? It's actually a place in, place in Brooklyn if you yeah. look it up, uh, Brooklyn Bamboo Bike Builders. Cool. So if you're local, you can do it here or the Phil, he does them for you. And uh, they're very well priced and just really good for the, the New York streets. How was it traveling with this? Great. I, I travel with my bike all around the world and always bring my bike and... Uh, Box it up or...? Just, yeah, just chuck it in the box, take the wheels off, take the seat out, take the handlebar off, just chuck it in a cardboard bike box. Yeah. 
you know, bike on one side, wheels on the other side, and when you get to your destination, just, you know, build your bike up and then chuck the cardboard box in the recycling. Uh-huh. Easy, easy peasy. Yeah. And then uh, save on transport costs, you know, lower your footprint, and just get to meet a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I've made so many friends already in New York just from the bamboo bike and yeah. riding around. Yeah. It's great. Get to see places, and especially in the summertime, you get to cool off. Yeah. So that's good. Well, compared to renting a bike, I mean, it makes so much sense. Oh, I mean, I'll, you know, and renting a bike can be good, but you, know, you get bikes that aren't maintained well, they don't fit you right, or you don't, you don't yeah. know them that well. Yeah. Taking a bike is maybe. 10 minutes hassle checking in at the airport mm-hmm. versus you know six weeks or however long you're going to use it for in your holiday destinations so yeah it's you know that's what i'll focus on yeah i've got youtube video up how to pack your bike for airline travel right so uh, right that's good but i'll take it all around take it to thailand and all sorts yeah and how long have you had her um she's about uh six months old okay yeah so yeah uh, it works well and where did you get this? Down in Australia? I uh, got it sent to Australia, but it's made in Thailand. Made in Thailand, yeah. By Phil Webb from BambooBikeMaker.com. And uh, no, it's a great bike. Is, are there, do they make different models? Yeah, you can get a mountain bike, you can get like a street bike, you can get a fixed gear bike, a cool. track bike, or, or cool. the road race bike. Yeah. So you ship the frame out to me, and then I put all my parts on there. Oh, right. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. So, yeah. So it's not like they're shipping the whole bike. You, you, no. add, you add your, your favorite parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Wow. No, so you can customize your, uh, your specifications on your bike so uh-huh. to meet your, uh, your daily riding style. Uh, yeah. I like what you said about not worrying about the weight of the bike so much yeah. and just losing a few more pounds off your body. <laughs> you know, like that's what people freak out about so much is the bike weight. Yeah. And they could easily lose two pounds, you yeah. know, just... Or, or, or 60 pounds. Or 60. Or 100 <laughs> pounds even, some guys. It's a good point. Yeah. I was reading a magazine the other day and... Grand Central Station, a bicycle magazine, and one of the advertisements was forget the diet, forget the diet, um, upgrade you know, your brake levers or something like that. It's just like you're gonna save 20 grams in your freaking brake yeah. levers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're gonna pay four hundred dollars to do that. Yeah, it's like, are you serious? <laughs> so I took a photo. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, it's like a whole clicky thing, you know, like the bike sort of club, you know. Yeah. Everyone has to have the lightest bike. Oh yeah, it's a big competition and yeah. And I've been in there before as well, but man, it cracks people when the banana boy on his heavy bamboo bike is kicking him on the hills. Yeah, it, it cracks and they're just like, yeah, can't be, man. Yeah, you know? but it's all good. <laughs> so bike weight doesn't matter. Bicycle fit is what matters the most. Uh-huh. As long as your bike's gonna fit you, because that's where your you know your legs don't want to be too cramped up or too extended, and a local bike shop can yeah, help get people stiff. get fitted up. Yeah, bike fits imperative. And what I do is I put a little liquid paper pen mark there, or a little you know, texter mark. Mm-hmm. So if you take your seat out, or if it slips down, you have a reference point. Mm-hmm. So I do it in my handlebar as well. So if anything slips, you got a reference point with just a you know fifty cent whiteout pen. It can save a lot of hassles. Yeah, um, like if when when you ride with Lance Armstrong, what yeah. and you bring up the ideas of like the fruit diet and yeah. stuff. What does he say about all that? <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> So I ride of I ride of Lance not as like a personal friend. I'm just like the, yeah, I'm the uh, the sucker fish that you know jumps in the back of the bunch and just you know people know me and like Carly come on in you know whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've talked with Lance about nutrition and about his cancer campaign and stuff like that. I said to Lance this year, I said you know, maybe you should. Uh, what would be great is if you promoted dietary change with the Livestrong. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And he's like, did yeah. they ever talk about diet? No. We he's, Lance's reply was yeah, whatever. Yeah, and changes he changes the subject to something else. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that's cool. I mean, well, who's his biggest sponsor? Bristol Myers Squibb. Mm. <laughs> it's like Pharmaceuticals. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So it's sort of like you know you're cutting into your sponsors. You, you sort of if He's you talk about so nutrition, good. you're biting the hand that feeds you. If you're sponsored by Bristol Myers Squibb, so yeah. he can hardly say anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's gonna be so careful what he says. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I found Lance is you know friendly guy, and you know I've trained with a lot of those Tour de France riders when they come to Adelaide. And, pretty friendly guys all around. Mm-hmm. It's good you get to see what they eat and things mm-hmm. like that. They're all into high carb, low fat. A lot of those guys do eat a lot of fruit and they eat a bit of vegan when they want to drop the weight. Funny enough, like I know Tyler Hamilton, Lance's teammate, who's now going against Lance in the doping allegations. Tyler will you know, mm-hmm. sit down and eat just apples for a couple of days just to drop a few pounds. And, yeah. and a lot of guys, you know, bananas is like the, the original power bar uh-huh. for cyclists. You see a lot of cyclists with a banana or two in the back pocket. 
green banana or two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so no, yeah, Lancey's a friendly guy. Yeah. But it's interesting now all the doping allegations are coming out. Yeah, it's too bad. It's so too that's, bad. That's, that's pro sport, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's too much competition. I mean, well, the, the money involved in it really, like... Yeah, you got millions of dollars, you got lifetime fame. Yeah. Human temptation, human yeah. nature. Yeah. yeah. Rockstar lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> building it up like that, and, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. we've got another 10 minutes, so... Um, yeah. Let's, uh, how about, I, I think a really cool thing that you guys have inspired is kind of like traveling based around the fruit. Uh, yeah. Like one of the things I love the, the most about traveling is going to the markets and seeing what's up. Yeah. Like seeing what's there, what's in season. Um, what are some of your favorite spots that you've been to? Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there's a place where we go called Chanaburi. Okay. And um, the fruit there is always amazing, always heaps of mangoes and bananas and what else, like papayas and heaps, <sighs> like, mangoes, and everything, things, like, everything, yeah, whatever you can imagine, Depends. and it's quality, you know, it's really beautiful quality. You ever see Salak, Salak yeah, yeah, fruit, yeah. snake skin? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, have you had that? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't, it's sort of it's sour, okay. is it? It's kind of sour, yeah. tangy. Yeah. It's more condiment fruit, I think. Yeah. The it's Chanaburi kind of is amazing. They grow more Salak in Chanaburi than anywhere in the world. They grow more durian in Chanaburi than anywhere in the world. They grow more mangosteen in oh, Chanaburi wow. than anywhere in the world. It's yeah. like... Chanterbury, Thailand is like, if you want fruit between May, September, peak season, yeah. you get durian for 50 cents a pound, mango steens, 10 wow. cents a pound, mm-hmm. you know, mangoes. Whoa. Yeah. Accommodation. They're $8 a pound here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, in, it's insane. And if you just want mango steens for free, they'll, give them, they'll probably give them to you. It's, they're that generous in China Brewery. It's, it's There's always fruit skins everywhere. I love that. Yeah, uh-huh. like you walk in. You don't yeah, see yeah. that anywhere in a Western country. You don't yeah. see that. This is mango steam yeah. skins everywhere. <laughs> like, I, awesome. I did a 220 kilometer bike ride last month in China Brewery because every month I do a 200 k ride, just easy, just riding around, checking out new places. Mm-hmm. It's just like walking in the shopping malls all day. So I ride my bike around and. Literally every kilometer for 220 kilometers, I played a game. If if I could see a fruit tree, or I could see someone selling fruit, and I literally could for every kilometer. So when I walked and in, rode into town, there's obviously no fruit trees, but there's people selling fruit. Mm. And when I got out of town, there's obviously fruit farms everywhere. Yeah. And so if anyone says that fruit's not sustainable, all they need to do is go to Chanaburi, Thailand, and you, you can't even see around the corner because there's just trees everywhere. Uh-huh. A lot it's, of biodiversity too, not mono. Yeah, it's not mono. Yeah. It's, Nice. You have rows of durian, then rows of banana, then rows of mangosteen, then rows of jackfruit, then pomelo, then salak. Wow. Because they're into that, you know, cross uh, sort of system farming. Yeah, yeah. To reduce pesticide usage. Yeah, for sure. You got a couple of little mono farms, but 90% of it's like, you know, yeah. diverse Yeah. Well, like wild stuff. durian trees everywhere in, you know, the countryside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just just dropping everywhere. So much fruit there. So that's what we love about traveling is going to new places. and. Copenhagen's really cool too. That's in yep. Thailand. It's okay. It's island. Off Thailand, it's yep. really cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not as good for fruit as Chanaburi, but the lifestyle is really cool. You know, like there's heaps of people, like heaps of different nationalities there, and mm-hmm. yoga schools, and it's on the beach, and yeah. it's such a great lifestyle. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. But yeah, um, Chanaburi is good. Yeah, definitely. Any other countries? Malaysia. 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 Yeah, yeah, for durian. Really okay. good for durian. Yeah. It's like they're really proud of their durian there. Yeah. They really look after it. Right. Have a lot of organic and. Yeah, Thailand's a bit less organic, really. For but it depends, you know, like, I say to people, look for the ants. Look for the ants. Mm. If ants are on your fruit, it's good. Yeah. If it tastes yeah. good, that's good. Yeah. I've never actually had chemical-grown fruit that tastes quality. Hmm. You, know, you bite into a peach that's conventional and be, like, a bit flowery or have a little bit of flavour, but it's not really, you know, pumping. Yeah, yeah. And when you have a peach off the tree you can, or whatever, I've never had good quality fruit that's conventional. Yeah, and I've been to conventional farms that aren't certified organic. And I've had good quality fruit. And I'm, I'm like, what are you doing here? And they're like, oh, we don't use much pesticides, and you know, like we just got to farm in the road, use the manure and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I'm like, oh, there we go. They yeah. know how to grow it. Yeah. They, or there's some old Italian. They use the Italian methods. Yeah. And then you go to a farm because I travel on my bike a lot, so I like to go to farms, talk to farmers, talk to people. You go to an Australian farm with like an Aussie farmer <laughs> who doesn't care about the land, doesn't care about Chase you down the road taste, with the gun. <laughs> just you know, and you see him spray and you, and you, t- you taste their fruit or you buy at local market, and it's it's, it's like a, a washing rag or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it looks good, but so, there's no taste. Yeah. So I find organic taste is everything. 
You can't grow good fruit with chemicals. Are you seeing a transition in Australia? Are they going yeah, yeah, better? Yeah. They're getting better. Well, the biggest growing fruit industry is organic worldwide. Okay. Yeah. In the States, in Europe, in Asia, in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, it's seeping into Australia. It's big oh, yeah. in America, though. Right? Yeah. It's, that's why we love America. Yeah. America's always the leader. <laughs> It's weird. It's like there's the best and the worst here. Yeah. You know, you yeah. see like the worst, but then also it's so good because you can get whatever you need. Yeah. Bingo, yeah. man. You got like New York, you got like, yeah. You got, it's incredible. You got I mean, something. And people think Australia is sort of like Puppies. the place to go. You know, it's like, oh, it's this tropical island and you can get oh. whatever you want, like the most amazing fruit. And yeah. It's just not like that. Yeah. You know, it's really expensive and it's, it's hard to get good quality fruit. Mm -hmm. Like we were living off Californian dates. Mm -hmm. in Australia yeah so it's and we're the fruit freaking experts it's, you, you can get it if you want it if you work for it and search for it but it's, it can be challenged bulk, can bulk. Be challenged. Yeah. yeah yeah especially this year with the oh, rains sure. and stuff like that yeah it's crazy about the mangoes like you know do you think the actual trees were killed or they just lost the fruit they what happened is they got heavy rainfall when the flowers set oh yeah and the, the rain just knocks the flowers off yeah no mango season. Yeah. Or, or, like hardly any skeleton yeah. mango season. Yeah. Um, Nothing but, worse than no mangoes. Oh, I know. Oh, God. But well, they're the, there's the Philippine ones here, or they're like those nice yellow ones. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's Nam Dok Mai or not, but no. it kind of, they call them champagne yeah, mangoes. Champagnes, yeah, champagnes. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty nice. good. Yeah, they're good. The best oh, arc yeah. is the Nam Dok Mai. They're yeah. in Thailand. You've had them, haven't you? In, in Thailand, Thailand yeah. 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 They're really sugary so sweet. So tender and like, yeah. just melt in your mouth. Yeah. 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 No so. strings. Right, right. But what I like here is the bananas here are just so tasty. Like the Ecuadorian <laughs> yeah. organic yeah. bananas. Or the, That's or good to know. Costa Rican organic bananas are so tasty and, uh -huh. and bananas are always our, smoothie our or favorite. Banana whip? Yeah. Oh yeah, whip. banana whips, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Semi frozen banana blended on high speed. Yeah. Pretty nice. Yeah, high speed. I had that for breakfast. Nice. Ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you could have done instead of going down downstairs to get some ice cream, like open up the freezer and chuck in some yeah, bananas yeah. and the Vitamix and And then you get the carbs that your body needs, yeah. your mm -hmm. brain needs. And nothing you great. Yeah, it was, uh, I didn't know a lot back then, you know, mm -hmm. so it was kind of like, you know, you go for what, Oh yeah, whatever. Uh, we got a few minutes left, so if you want to plug, what, yeah. I, I know you have a, an event coming up. Oh, You've yeah. got a few events, so tell us yeah. about what's coming up, websites to find you, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. We've got the Woodstock Fruit Festival coming up. It's going to be the, the longest raw foods festival ever done that I'm aware of, and that's going to happen in uh, Catskills National Park in upstate New York. Okay. And that starts on the August 15th. Google no. up. August 18th? August 18th, yeah. maybe. Yes, yeah, so that's right. Mm, to 25th. Google up okay. Woodstock Fruit Festival. Dot com. Nice. And then our, our website's 30 bananas a day com. Okay. We've also got a talk coming up in um, New York City at Bonobo's Raw Food Restaurant. That's the 11th of August from 6 till 9 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can find that out on 30 bananas a day com. Okay. And what's your blog? Oh, sweetjuicyfreely.com. Okay. And well, what's your shirt say? Oh, it says, <laughs> go for it yourself. And you can raw, swear. rawfitbitch.com. <laughs> <laughs> so look up my website too. <laughs> and you're on Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah, freely. Yeah. Okay. And then just Durian Writer. Durian Writer. And if you look on durianwriter.org, there's my blog. Okay. And the YouTube channel I use is Durian Writers. Yes. So yeah, people just Google it up, Durian Writers, Durian Writer. Stuff, crazy stuff will come up. Yeah. And we're also doing a talk in Pennsylvania, Lansdale at Arnold's Way on uh, Monday, the 1st of August, which is in two days. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're doing one tomorrow, aren't we? Vibrant Living Festival? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Vibrant Living, yeah. You've yeah. been to that before? Is that, no, no. Is it first year this year? It might be the first or second, but... Cool. Yeah. Hmm. More of them. Well, great to have you both. Cool, man. Really Thanks cool. For us. Really cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> cheers so much. Go Thanks. Away. Yeah, thank awesome, you. awesome. All right, thanks everybody. Anthony Anderson show, and uh, stay tuned for more. OnlyOneTV.com. Peace. Thanks so much. <laughs>